Hello everyone, and welcome to a new playthrough of Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. Uh, we're going to get started here on a, a Tengu Transmuter. Uh, it's it's a new weekend for me, so that means time for another game of Crawl, because the tournament is still going. Uh, I played a little bit over the week, but didn't uh, really have enough time to record at all, um, or indeed any of it. Uh, notably, so Tango Transmuter is another one of the Nemlex choices. Uh, whoops, wrong. Uh, I wanted the, the screen. Yeah, turn on stones. Another one of the Nemlex choices, and uh, I tried several of them yesterday, and I am just so... I, I don't know. Like, I think I'm bad at Tangu, and I think Transmuter is hard. I think that's why they've all died. Uh, but I don't know. Um, certainly the most recent one that I played was, like, 100% not because Transmuter is hard or because Tangu is bad. It was because I am bad. Like, uh, I just, uh... I had gotten fed Haas, uh, and I had like six wandering mushrooms, which if you've ever had, uh, this is on like dungeon seven or something, maybe not even that deep, six, I don't know. If you've ever played fed Haas or seen fed Haas, you know that in the early game, uh, wandering mushrooms can basically kill everything. Like that game I had I had killed two what normally should be quite terrifying player ghosts and like done this by just standing still and letting one or two wandering mushrooms kill them. And then I was like, oh, there's a crocodile here. I'll just fight it for a while. And then I was down to half health, but I was like, I kind of want to kill the crocodile myself. Get the full experience, not let these wandering mushrooms... Oh, I forgot. I finally set it up so it auto assigns some of my spells to good to note to letters I like, so I don't have to change it. Gonna, gonna take some getting used to. Uh, I was like, but I, I want I want to get the experience myself. Don't let the wandering mushroom steal my experience. Well, it turned out that uh, half health was low enough that the crocodile could one shot me, and then he did, and so it was totally my fault, and I'm dead. Uh, <laughs> I, I had found, like, two rings of wizardry that game as well, uh, like, right next to each other on Dungeon 2, so I was able to cast Spider Form, like, super early and just put all my experience into fighting and dodging, and it's just like, ugh. That was easily a winnable game, I think. The others, like, I had not gotten far enough that it was that it was clear to me that I could win if I wanted to. Like, I had another game, an Olivalon game, that was, like, going pretty okay. And then I got shafted down from Dungeon 3 to Dungeon 5, and, like, who do I run into but a bunch of orcs and an orc priest and an ogre, and, like, while I'm running from those, Prince Ribbit turns up. And, like, I'm level 3. What am I supposed to do, man? I couldn't find any stairs up. I didn't have any teleports. Ah, uh, you know. I'm sure I could have done something to prevent it. That's how this game works. But, uh, Tengu... So I've actually, I realized, uh, I was looking around at my, um, some of my statistics, and I realized that, so I already knew, you know, I'm, I've, I've achieved greater player, right? Which is, like, win every background once and every race once. Um, but I'm actually, like, kind of close to doubling up on that, um, to winning everything twice. Tengu is, like, there's like four, there's four to six, I forget, races that I haven't won twice, uh, Tengu is one of them. And then like seven or eight backgrounds I haven't won twice, and Transmuter is one of them. Uh, and then the number of gods that I haven't won twice is, I don't know, in the same ballpark, I forget. But uh, Elivalon is, I believe, still scoring... This is a little bit dicey here. Let's get out of here. Elivalon is scoring pretty well this tournament right now, I think. What am I... Oh, God. I'm going to get killed by all these stupid jackals, aren't I? Great. Great. 
I might get out of this, but... Hey, we're alive. All right. Sunrise spider form. Yep. See, it went on S. Isn't that great? Exactly where spider form ought to be. And so, like, if I had died there, that wouldn't have been Tangu's fault, and it wouldn't have been Transmuter's fault. It would have been mine. Uh, I confess that now that I'm on a streak, not on a streak, that is, and I've lost, like, how many, how many games have I lost in a row here? I have lost four, well, I tried one Tangu Transmuter like several days ago, and because it's a Nimlex choice from a while ago that nobody's won. And then I've lost three in a row just now. Uh, I confess I'm playing somewhat more casually in the early game than I usually do. I usually try to make relatively certain that I don't just have stupid deaths. I try to make each game a win, but uh, Tangu Transmuter is frustrating me and I, I want to win it, and so I'm playing more of them, but I'm also like, it's hopeless. You know how, like, I don't know, something that I uh, argue against uh, is when new players or weaker players are like, oh, you know, the early game is so boring. Like, are you, f what the hell? What? Whites on dungeon one? Get out of here. Okay, well, we were done with Dungeon 1 anyway, and we were heading downstairs. Uh... So I could come up this way, which ought to lose them. Or I can come this way, which certainly loses them, but just, like, takes longer. I think I'll just, I'll just go this way. What are they talking about? Oh, uh newer or, or weaker players who are like the early game is just so boring I just like hold tab for the first 15 minutes until I finally get a character that I care about and like I, I don't atta I'm not attached to my characters at all and until like the end of lair because they just die anyway um I kind of feel that way a little with these tangy transmuters which is a fairly new experience for me like why am I so bad at these compared to all these other, uh, like I can, like I had, oh, uh, this is fine, I guess. I had like a, my Nemlex choice win rate was like 80% or something on this tournament until I picked up Tangu Transmuter, which is literally impossible. Pakelis? That's a little, little scary. It's interesting though. So I like, I mean, Pakelis on a mage is scary because you lose your magic regen, um, but Transmuter doesn't cast their spells too much, and having wands would be nice? I think I'm going to pass. Anyway, just Tangu Transmuter has been frustrating, and so I decided, like, for one thing, I, was, it's, I wanted to record it anyway because it's the weekend now, and, like, it's easy to record stuff. Um, but also because I do play better when I'm recording, uh, as a rule. Have I really not found any stones yet? Apparently not. Um, just because, like, even if I, I'm not, like, intentionally playing more carefully, it's just, you know, saying things like, hey, this situation is scary, not only makes me <clears throat> admit to myself the situation is scary, but just, like, the time that it takes to say something about a situation is time that I'm not in the middle of doing something dumb without thinking about it, right? Uh... So that helps. Come on, Pat, get out of here. I mean, you're gonna die eventually, man. Quit. There we go. Bats are the worst. Uh, let's try a spider form here. Nice. Whoa! All 
All right, take that, you dang jackals. An adder? Uh, how many arrows do I have? Just 10? Oof. Normally you have plenty of arrows. That's why I just use sticks to snakes on anything scary, but right now I don't. So there's some argument for not trying it here, but I think this is scary enough that we need we need our own adder. Adders are pretty rough. Alright, fine. Went off without a hitch, but it might not have. Identify as nice. Heal wounds, haste, both good. Teleport, okay. Uh, the other thing is sort of unrelated, but I was reminded by that Pakelis altar and my considering it, even though it seems pretty bad for this character. Ooh, hello. Um, yesterday, I thought of something uh, interesting to measure, or that I wanted to measure anyway. Uh, and because, you know, of online play and, you know, it all goes into the giant database, the SQL, SQL, I've never actually said that loud. It's like a play on SQL, the programming language that lets you query databases, but uh, SQL is like the bot that keeps the database of all the stuff about crawl games that have happened. Um, anyway, so you can query, you can find out a lot of interesting stuff from querying SQL, and that's what I do when I like, when I say, hmm, how many of these games have I lost recently? I'm looking something up in SQL usually. Um, okay. Anyway, so I was wondering about uh, God choice uh, timing. So I was like, I've played a bunch of games recently in which I never visit the temple, or I do, but I already have a God and I just went in there for fun uh, because I picked up my God elsewhere outside of temple, right? Um, And I think that that's pretty. Oh, magical power is nice. Like that—that that jives with what I say. I, you know, is is a good way to play, right? I say to not like don't start out your game saying I'm gonna play a tanky transmuter of Sith or whatever. Uh, but instead, play the tanky transmuter. And like whatever good items you find, you take them. Whenever you find a god that is like okay, that is useful for you, uh, that's your god, not the one you wanted when you left uh, dungeon when, when you started on dungeon one, uh, because just the power of having any god will keep you alive. Like it, you want it, you want to get to the point where your god is helping you as soon as possible, uh, because you need the help early and late you can sort of do without it right does even having an a non-optimal god uh is fine late because your character doesn't really need a god that badly most of the time but in the early game it's so easy to be killed uh, that my philosophy is you want as soon as possible a god who will help that not happen Ooh, morning star huh And, uh, we're out of here. There you go, stupid orc. Uh, so anyway, that's my philosophy, and so it sort of makes some sense that <clears throat> the last, like, I think all of my tournament games, I've chosen a god outside of temple. Because it's... You know, Temple doesn't show up until Dungeon 3, and you start seeing Overflow Altars on Dungeon 2, and, like, if most gods are reasonable for most backgrounds, which is, like, not quite true, but a lot of them are, um, then, of course, I'll be picking up a god before Temple most of the time. Uh, but what I wondered was, how often do I take a god at Temple versus say other players on average or what about just other like good players 
I think I'm a good player. Like, I'm not... Oh, geez. Hmm. All right, well, that's what I get for spamming something at 50% fail. Um... So what I did was I asked Sequel. I said, hey, you know, um, how often does the average player choose a god in temple versus uh, somewhere else? And it's, uh, it, it actually, interestingly, uh, varies by like what version of the game it is. In recent versions, uh, temple, is the god choice about a third of the time, a little more, um, and out of temple, maybe two thirds of the time, which actually seems like really, now that I think about it, I kind of would have thought it would be more biased towards temple than that, but I guess not. People often run into the god they want uh, fairly early, I suppose. Hey, no blinking. Oh, he got dismissed. By my amulet. I guess that's okay. Um, and uh, if you look over all time, it's like 50%. So I think this is just because there are more gods these days, and uh, that means there are more overflow altars. So you, like, uh, it's sort of more likely that the god you want is not in temple. Uh, I don't know if I want to be in spider form against an adder. That was just like a dumb thing to do. <laughs> okay. Still only a couple of arrows. Maybe I should have not reacted so violently against this adder, but okay. Uh, for me, uh, in the tournament, of course, uh, my temple percent is zero. I have never chosen a god at the temple in tournament. Um, but recently, in, in the past, you know, few versions of the game, recent is defined as like the last two release versions, so point eighteen and point seventeen, and four versions of Trunk in between those two. Uh, for me, it's like eighteen percent, seventeen percent, something like that. I forget exactly. Uh, so, like, I do sometimes pick a god in temple, but uh, not always. And, but I compared, like, say, all greater players, that is, people who have won every race and every background at least once, which is not necessarily good players, but generally if you do that, like, you're pretty reasonable as a player, like, you're not awful. Uh, and that was sort of the, the best proxy I really have for, really for being a good player. I forgot. You can't really measure, like, hey, sequel, show me uh, just good players, because it's not really such a, an easy thing. And it's hard to say players whose win rate is at least X. And, like, is that necessarily the best measurement of being good? I don't know. So I just chose greater players as, like, something that, you know, filters out for fairly reasonable players. Stop it, spider form. All right, I guess we're just going beastly. No, we're not even doing that. Okay, we got him. Uh, so interestingly, though, so I sort of expected uh, I, uh, that this would temple percent, a low temple percent would correlate with being a good player, was my thinking. Uh, because weaker players, or new players, uh, tend to, in my experience, say, I want to play a deep elf conjurer of Vehemet, or whatever. And then they just wait until they get a vehement altar or die. Uh, whereas a good player, uh, or at least one who follows my philosophy and therefore that makes them good because I'm a genius, uh, would say I'm playing a deep elf conjurer and then like, oh, there's an altar to say, uh, Fedos or Hybriados maybe, or Ash, wow, Ash easily, right? Mokleb is pretty good, Okawaru's pretty good, even for a conjurer, you know, you want to tab things, save MP. Rue, maybe. You know, there's a lot of reasonable choices here for a deep elf conjurer. And my thinking was that a stronger player would be more inclined to choose their god before temple because they have more gods in mind as ones they would be willing to play, to take rather. 
Uh, but it didn't really seem to happen. For, uh, for greater players, the temple percent was exactly the same as uh, for ordinary players, or within you know any reasonable margin. It's not like it was exactly 38.12% or something, but it was like 37 and 38, like it was very close. That's nice. Uh, but I did check out a couple of other players who I know are reasonable. Like I checked out Elliptic, who I think still has the record for the longest win streak ever. I'm not sure, but it's uh, a very long win streak. Um, and his win, his temple percent is about as low as mine. It's like we're 17 and 18. I forget who's 17 and who's 18, but it's 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 very close. Gamma Funks is like 20 something. He's uh, pretty good. Um, but then, like, I also checked ZXC, who I only. I didn't really. I, like, I knew of the guy, but I didn't know, like, if he was a, a good player at all or not. Uh, but I found out recently because I added. I went looking for people who have dungeon crawl videos because I wanted to add a videos section to the subreddit sidebar, which I did just a couple of days ago. And I found from Demise's channel a link to ZXC's channel. And his videos are like, all right, uh, we're on a 33 game win streak and we're trying to win a troll arcane marksman now. And I'm like, what? How did I not know that this guy has a 33 game win streak? I've got like my best streak ever is four. Who is this guy? He must be a good player. Uh, so anyway, I just didn't know. Now I do. Uh, and his temple percent is like 45. It's the opposite of what I expected. He's like a good player and his win, his temple percent is like very high. Uh, and I asked him about it overnight because like he lives in like Australia or something. So it's kind of the time zones are funky. Um, but I got a response from him. And he said that he likes to wait for an ideal god, and he has what he considers a different philosophy from many good players about choosing a god. And like, I have to agree, he has a different philosophy than I do. But like, you know, is that because he's good enough that he he doesn't need the extra help from a god early, and he can afford to wait for like the best god? I guess that was. I think Amethyst speculated that that might be why ZXC's temple percent is so high. Anyway, so just some stuff I was, I don't know if studying is the right word, but investigating. Uh, and it is nice to have, oh no, not, uh, hmm, it's definitely a little sketchy to be spider form against an adder again. Oh well, we're doing it, guys. Ha! Get out of here, you stupid adder. Good work, amulet of dismissal. Never, never let me say amulet of dismissal is a, is a pain in the butt, because that was great. Uh, but it is it is a pain in the butt sometimes though for sure. Anyway, and having sequel around means that you can do that kind of investigation without really needing to. Uh... Come on, spider form, you can do it. All right, I guess you can't do it. Let's go find a better place to fight then. Without having to like go out there and survey players, and you know, it's not like everyone would have accurate memories of their of their style anyway, right? So even if you could survey players, it would not necessarily get you accurate answers. Whereas having Sequel around and everybody playing online, like that's one reason I like playing online. I can do those kinds of statistics on just my own games. But it's also nice to be able to just link people. You know, hey. Here's the game I have going on. Can you give me some advice? Oh, a weapon shop, great. Uh, okay. That appears to be a thing that is happening and is really bad. Orc wizards. Uh, not the best thing in the world to mess with, apparently. This one happens to have throw flame. Yeah, let's get out of here. If you had to throw frost, uh, it would be another story because we have a 
a rope fold resistance. Oh, have we really not seen any altars at all? That's how we saw the Kellis. Yeah, very funny. Honestly, now that I have the Ring of Magical Power, maybe I could handle the Kellis a little bit better, but probably not. God, where is this guy? Crimson Imps, man. They just blink everywhere. All right, one shot him, though. Oh, actually, not quite, right? We, we hit him, and we poisoned him, and then he was almost dead, and then that turned the poison went off and killed him. So it's not exactly a one shot. Hmm. I don't really remember, like, what I was talking about before I went off on that. It doesn't really matter, right? Uh, okay, this is some kind of interesting vault here. Rue. Sure. I think we already... I think the, the team I'm on already has a Rue win. Yeah, but that's fine. I'm going to take it anyway. Right? Am I? What what is the uh, what is the current god scoring for Ru? Just out of curiosity. Just out of curiosity. Not that I care. I keep telling myself. Ru is scoring thirty five points. I really would like to take a Livalon, but mm, would I want Ru? Does he make sense for this character? Sack hand is not as good for transmuters because your offhand punches tend to be a lot stronger because you're training on armed combat. Uh, hmm. Sack armor is great for transmuters because you don't want to use it anyway. I guess it's called sacrifice durability. You don't typically wear a lot of armor. Uh, Rue is just generally good. But I, on the other hand, I bet I've won more than one game with Rue, right? Maybe what I should do is aim for a god I've only won once with. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Not look at everybody's won games ever, but mine, please. Um, yeah, so the gods I've only won once with are Zom, the Shining One, Elivalon, Sif, Bio, Nemelex, and Yoretta Lemnul. Um, of those, like Nemelex and Zom, of course, are scoring great. Uh, Jiva scoring very well, because it's hard to get Jiva. Um, Elivalon scoring quite well, then Sif and Yoretta Lemnul. <laughs> But I want to win a Tenga Transmuter. I don't want to keep doing this forever. So if Rue is right for this character, I should take it. And I just don't know if he is. Like, Rue is just generally pretty good, right? I mean, Rue is just generally pretty good. Let's take him. And the thing is, the thing is, guys, with Rue, you can just take him and then abandon, right? Uh, if you want. How do we, uh, wins by God, you reach... Yeah, so in order to win a game counting as a God in um, the tournament, you have to reach six stars of piety with that God without first worshipping any other God. So if we didn't care about tournament, it would be 100% right to take Ru, because you can always just switch gods before you sacrifice anything. Rue's got, you know, abandonment wrath is just that you're stuck with your sacrifices even though you lose all the benefit from them. Uh, and if you haven't made any, that means he has no wrath, right? So, um, so if you run into a Rue altar and you don't have a god yet, uh, it's like always right if your goal is just to win the game and you don't have some other goal to take Rue and then to figure it out later. Um, I kind of do the same thing with a Livalon because she's pretty good, and most gods 
she doesn't mind if you switch to. Whoa, oh, okay, this was very careless play. Yikes. All right, what we're going to do is a little bit dubious. We're going to come back here. No, that didn't work. I was hoping the snake would appear up here and I could swap places with it. Like this, see? That bought me a little bit of distance from the troll. Oh, and that's right, I can fly. Equals A, G, F, please. Yeah, let's make a little bit of distance between me and the troll as well. I forgot I could do that. Good, good Tengu. Good Tengu strats. Uh, I should have done that instead of messing with the snake, which could have been an easy way to get myself killed. Um, so, on the other hand, though, since we do kind of care about uh, what god we win with on tournament, like if I... If I switch away from Rue this game, I will not get points for any god at all, uh, which is kind of a shame. So I think I will be sticking with Rue. But if I felt it was really important, I could switch away. Uh, and it wouldn't jeopardize my chances to win the character. Let's, let's get out of here, stupid iguana. Yeah, getting getting your wings, although Tengu don't actually have wings. They're just bird people who can magically fly. They don't have wings. I don't understand what... That makes no sense to me, but apparently it's the true nature of how things are. Uh, in crawl. They're bird people, and they can fly, but they don't have wings, I have been told. Uh, apparently, like, if you look at the mentiles, they don't have wings, and the description of them doesn't say they have wings. It just says they're, like, bird people who can fly. Uh, hello, guys, come on. Are you kidding me? Let's, let's get out of here. Oh, although Doan is going to make that a problem, isn't he? Let's try to keep Devesa between me and Doan if we can. Or this iguana. All right. That was a bit dicey. It was like a lot dicey. Uh, all right, there's one staircase down there that's not a mess, right? <laughs> this is the best one, huh? Wow. Are there any uh, escape hatches on this floor? No. All right. Okay. We're going to have to get through that floor somehow, and I don't know how. Ring of Stealth, not bad, actually. Uh, well, let's get into spider form before we go down, I suppose. On the other hand, you can't fly in spider form, right? And flight is an important tool, but I think spider form is just much better for combat. Yeah, let's go for it, spider form. That's kind of like a, a typical transmuter trick, is um, before you go down a staircase, especially if you know the staircase is going to be dangerous, you know, get into the right form for fighting before you go, uh, so you don't waste a turn on it, and you don't risk failing. Because, like, as a transmuter, your spell chance is usually not, like, you have some risk of a spell failing uh, because you only need to cast it like once at the beginning of a fight so it's not that important to give it enough experience that it never fails okay, so there's the troll I'd like to see which direction he's going Seems to not be going anywhere. All right, looks like we lost him. Or he lost us, since all we really did was stand still. There's Doan. Let's try to fly. Whoa, all right, we are next to him now. Get poisoned, buddy. Okay. And I think 28% is good enough for spider form. Let's turn off transmutations and get up fighting and dodging while staying on the unarmed combat. So, 
Duvessa is still going to be a problem uh, when we see her. She'll be berserked, right? Um, I have to. I should remember. I have these tools, right? Uh, I should have considered using one against the troll or the iguana or something when, when we had. We've had several occasions on this floor when we really should have been using more of our tools. Um, mostly haste, I think. Why am I not able to stop flying? That's interesting. I'm flying now, but I can't stop flying. That doesn't seem right. Hmm. Oh, I think you just can't stop flying. No, yeah, can you? I don't know. I'm not sure how Tengu's native flight works when it's temporary. Is it like a, like a potion of flight that you can't turn it off? Or is it like um, evocable flight that you can turn off? All right, there's another altar down here. Zom. Yeah, how fitting. Call the rainbow. It's like, you know, all these rainbow colors are just like... This, this could be any god altar, but it's sort of fitting that it happened to be Zom. Because uh, he likes the rainbow colors. Degeneration. It's like the one remaining strictly bad potion, I believe. All the others have been modified to have some interesting effects that are not negative. Is this Crazy Youth? I guess I don't know whether it's Crazy Youth or... Yep, yeah, okay. Or a Fed House Altar when you see trees like that, but uh, with the maces lying on the ground. I mean, it's, it's Crazy Youth and you, you leave him alone. Okay, this floor is starting to come under control here. We kind of know what's going on. We have some safe escapes if things go bad. Honestly, we're, we're basically done here. Um, I'm perfectly happy to leave Duvessa to her own devices and just get out of here, along with that troll. Jeez. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to mess with this stuff. Let's go find a new staircase. That one? I'm glad I have that ring of stealth. I think it's been helping a lot with dodging that troll. Alright, let's not go back up that stair because of the troll. Now, of course, we might be forced to, but I hope not. And we can at least, oh, there's an MLX altar, right? This looks like it's one of his heart-shaped vaults. Maybe diamond, but no, looks like a heart. I don't know, could be, could be either. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go, spider form. All right, there's the player ghost. So I do want to run away from that. What? Oh, I'm still flying. Okay, so you, you can't actually stop flying no matter what form you're in. Okay. All right, well, the player ghost was the most dangerous of the things down here. So I think rather than come up this way and risk the troll, now that the player ghost is on the loose anyway, I'm going to just uh, head towards the other staircase. Okay, we're attracting some scary monsters with us, which is not ideal. Where is there a corridor I can use that I can get to easily? This is like a false corridor. You can, no matter where you stand, two monsters can get to you. This one works, but it's kind of awkward to get to. I think like here 
It's my best bet, kind of. Alright, then we switch to like beastly appendage. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right, what do we do? What do we do, guys? Um, we have some potions. We have a wand of confusion. How how well is that working right now against these guys? Forty six percent against either one of them, huh? Let's try to confuse the ogre, I guess. Okay, we got him. Now we just have to finish off the scorpion and not get unlucky from the ogre hitting us. Let's put down a snake. There we go. Alright, so that's the ogre-scorpion situation sort of taken care of, but we're still very low on hit points, and... There's a troll on the loose, so we have to get to someplace safe. Which basically means an upstair. Where is the nearest upstair? It's there. Okay. Where did we last leave the troll? We left him there? Yeah, I think so. An adder, but he didn't see us. All of them are up that way, jeez. I guess that's that escape hatch could be viable. And Duvessa's around here somewhere. Shelly's are not fast, so we can just juke him with flight. All right, we made it to a staircase. Where are we now? We're on dungeon four. Yeah, no uniques known on this floor. Great. Okay. Looks like crisis averted. Uh, except I then chose to tab an ogre, which caused me some problems. <laughs> Man, they hit. They hit pretty hard. You know, I sort of expected he would miss, but, uh, you know, I'm not really entitled to make that assumption. <laughs> uh, invisibility is pretty good. Yeah, I think let's take invisibility. Okay, he missed me, and now he doesn't even know where I am. Confuse him again? Got him. Okay, Duvessa is still there. But we're invisible, so she has not... She's noticed something spooky, but doesn't know it's me, so she's not berserk, so we can leave. If she were berserk, she would be chasing us too quickly. Uh, this this dungeon floor, dungeon five, uh, is not a safe place in general. Dungeon six is not looking great, but it's not as bad. Um, how are we doing for like time? I think it's probably a reasonable time to end the video. Yeah, it's gotten gotten kind of long, uh, but I do want to wait until I'm like at least at full health, right? Before we head back down there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's the end of uh, video one. <laughs> as always, we seem to be on dungeon four. Uh, but we've actually cleared Dungeon 5 and, and uh, peaked into 6 as well. Uh, but so the good news is, this is still the first character on, on this playthrough. I haven't uh, haven't killed another one of these dang Tengu transmuters. Uh, so, you know, if you're looking forward to that, stay tuned for the next episode. I, uh, you know, who knows. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.